Guys, Sean, less lethal for dummies. Um, this is a video I promised a uh, friend of the channel, Angry Cruiser, uh, I would do, and um, well, here it is. So he asked a, a very basic question, and that is uh, regarding hand pumping a tank. So uh, I'm really putting in the work today, guys. <laughs> Um, so we're just going to go over a very basic overview of a bottle, a HBA bottle. So you receive your bottle, most paintball bottles, um, unless otherwise specified, um, have an output pressure. And by output pressure, I mean the uh, flow of air, the pressure of air that is being allowed to escape the bottle per shot so per pulling the trigger your air chamber fires and then it needs to refill this regulator here which is this top piece of your mark or sorry of your bottle um, there's some internal workings in there which dictates the output pressure that fills your marker after uh, the next sh after each shot sorry so <clears throat> when you're looking at your bottle you have your gauge. This one you can see is not at zero. Um, if you're ever going to perform any work on your bottle, you always want to ensure your bottle is at zero. Um, it's very important. This is essentially a air bomb. So if you try and unscrew the cap or one of these uh, burst discs or your gauge or the nipple, well, you're creating a projectile essentially. <laughs> um, so when you're looking at it, you have your gauge. Um, then you also have these two discs on the side and these are burst discs. So this one here is marked 1.8K, which is for a thousand. So this is 1800 PSI burst disc. This is your operating output pressure. So. This bottle is set to, as I mentioned, 800 to 850 PSI out of the box. Um, now, if this regulator in here, the springs or something were to malfunction, the rag seat failed, um, this disc will rupture before it sends that much pressure into your marker. Um, sending, you know, 1100 plus into your marker uh, isn't very healthy for it. Um, some of them can and can't handle it. And to what extent? Well, that's a whole other story. So the 1.8 K burst disc is your operating pressure. Um, the other disc you see is a 5 K disc, which is 5,000 PSI. This is for filling the bottle. So this bottle is rated to a 3000 PSI fill. Um, usually it's dictated, well, actually it'll be stamped on the bottle here. Uh, da, 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 da. It should be somewhere here, where am I looking? Why am I not seeing it? Hmm, interesting. Well, in any case, um, when you purchase a bottle, <laughs> you're purchasing a specific um, capacity bottle. In this case, it's 3000 PSI, this bottle full. Um, it can be dictated by the gauge, so you can see where it stops at three and then it's red the rest of the way. Um, but that, I would never rely on that. Uh, you need to know what you've purchased or um, I swear it was stamped on the bottle, but I'm not see. Oh, there it is, 310 bar. What does that say? Yeah, 310. Well, Jesus, that's actually more than the 3,000. Well, okay. In any case, know what your bottle <laughs> capacity is, and you only ever want to fill it to that, which relates to this burst disc here. If you filled this to 3,000, you're safe. This disc isn't going to burst. You filled it to four, it's probably not going to burst. 
Um, you start creeping up on 45 to 5,000, it's probably going to burst and you're well beyond what this bottle was um, sold as uh, capacity. <clears throat> there are 4,500 PSI bottles. Um, so just take note of that. Fill your bottle appropriately to whatever the recommended pressure is for the regulator and the bottle. Um, and your fill nipple. It's just a standard Foster type fitting. Um, it has a check valve inside. You look down there, you can see that kind of, there's a pin in there. So um, when this bottle's empty, which we're going to do here in a second, that pin kind of falls out of place and you know your bottle's empty. So right now, you can see on the gauge that it says there's air in there, but here's another tell is if you can't push the pin down, your bottle's full. Um, no questions asked. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna throw my um, output gauge tester on here. Throw this guy in. And what I wanted to just show here was what happens when the bottle isn't full, what the output pressure is at. So this bottle is, uh, I don't know, around, says around probably 600 PSI left in it. And it's showing like a 525 PSI output. Uh, so generally what happens is when you're, the output pressure of this bottle, so if this is 850 PSI output, once you're actual capacity falls below that 850 or whatever the pressure is set to, um, your output's gonna drop. So if this was an 1100 bottle, um, once you reach 1100 on your gauge here and you're below it, your output isn't gonna be 1100 anymore. It's gonna slowly diminish to the point when you're gonna notice it, it'll be quite obvious. So. We're just gonna drain the air out of this guy here. There you go, zero. And to confirm, let's try that pin. There you go. So that bottle is empty. So you're gonna see me pump this from empty. Uh, obviously I chose a 10 CI bottle because it's smaller and it should be around 250 pumps if I remember correctly. It's been a while since I used a hand pump, but just gonna scoot you over here. And this is the hand pump that I use. I purchased it on uh, Amazon. I'll move the camera down over here. This is, um, well, what it was sold to me at was a three and a half stage pump. And by stages, I mean inside this cylinder, there are different levels of air compression. So put it this way, the more stages you have, the easier it is to pump high pressure. So avoid one stage pumps, avoid two stage pumps, minimum I say three stage pump or you'll be sweating your balls off um, or you'll be leaning into this thing and hopefully you're like 300 pounds and you won't have a problem. But I am not 300 pounds. Um, they actually do sell four stage pumps now. Um, they can get expensive. Uh, this particular one is of kind of a, the Chinese variety. Um, it has built-in uh, desiccant, which is the moisture, which is another form of moisture trap. Um, some of the cheaper ones will have a uh, sort of like a foam filter on the end that plugs in line with this or you might actually see it down at the base here and then the lines plugged into it either way you need a moisture trap most of them include one 
uh, to some degree. So um, main thing is keep an eye out for a three-stage pump, a minimum three-stage hand pump. Uh, you got your gauge down there. And you have on this side, you have your bleed down screw. So this thing is covered in hair because it hasn't been used in a while. Um, what do you want to do before you start pumping? Is just thread your bleed screw in. Here on the side it says open. So obviously we want it closed. Uh, let's see if I'm missing anything here. Um, there, you're gonna find some discrepancies sometimes between the gauge on your pump and the gauge on your bottle. Um, unfortunately, one isn't going to be more accurate than the other because unless you have a way to confirm that one is accurate and one is not, um, you're just gonna have to kind of go by the seat of your pants unless one is way off. When I say it's gonna be they may not match. It's going to be like two, three hundred PSI difference. Um, in most cases, I just go, I go with the, uh, with the lower one. So for instance, if this one said 3000 and this said 2700, I'll pump this to 20, I'll pump this gauge to 3000 or vice versa. If this said 3000 and this said 2700, I'd pump it this to 3000. Um, this burst disc is set for 5,000, 300 PSI, 400 PSI isn't going to make a difference. Um, it's really not. So use your best judgment. What you don't want to do is, is be filling it like a thousand PSI over. Uh, I definitely wouldn't recommend that. You're getting to the threshold. These discs are just, uh, Well, it's like a, a steel, uh, I'm trying to think of the name. It's almost like a steel paper uh, that's engineered to burst at a certain pressure. And they're not always exact. Some may go sooner than others. And I've had instances where discs have gone just from cycling the pump so much. I mean, if you fill this tank like 3,000 times, every time you fill it, these discs, they bulge. They bulge. They bulge. Uh, and they weaken and they can burst. Uh, doesn't necessarily mean anything's wrong with your your, your regulator. Uh, just means you gotta replace your burst disc, so. Uh, let's get pumping. So take your bottle. Whoops. Just uh, plug your foster fitting in here like this. And I'm just gonna set this down on something here. I don't like to scratch my bottles. I'll put it kind of over that way. Hopefully the camera can see. And I'm gonna get pumping. Um, bottle's at zero, guys, so. Let's see how long it takes. Bottle's plugged in. Your bleed screw's closed. Start pumping. What you wanna do, let's move this up just a little bit here. Let's move it up some more. Nice ball shot there. You want full strokes. So don't half stroke the pump. And do it nice and smooth. One pump. Two pumps. So I'm doing the full compression and full um, extension of the pump. You can go faster than that, uh, but you also don't wanna go too fast. And if you get tired, take a break. Uh, air ain't going anywhere. So I'm just gonna move it back down here. We're gonna keep an eye on this. Hey, let's move it up even more. Now a nice beat shot. Man, maybe I should start only fans. <laughs> All right, I'm on pump two, so I'm gonna get going here, guys. Um, and we'll see about the 15 minute, four, well, what do we see? 15 minute mark of this video. So let's see how long it takes me to pump a 10 CI to 3000.
gauge finally starting to move. And once it does, it kind of comes up rather quickly. I already lost track of the pumps, guys, so we're just going by time at this point. All right, we're uh, pretty much at 2,000 and Sean needs a break. So, so far, three minutes have elapsed since I started pumping. A uh, little shortness of breath, but uh, Just kidding. <laughs> uh, yeah, it'll get you in shape. That's for sure. Gets your triceps going. Gets your biceps. And you'll see now that I'm at 2,000. Gonna get a little different stance here. I'm gonna start using. I'm gonna turn this camera up a little bit here. I'm gonna start doing a little bit of a squat like this. So pull up, when I pump down, I'm gonna not pinch my, <laughs> my dad's in there. I'm gonna use my body weight to get right down on top of that shelf. <laughs> Man, this video's taking a turn for the worst, guys. All right, so we're at 2,000. We're gonna continue here. I just get my pants pull up here. All right. Here I have it, 3,000 on the pump. Let's check our gauge. This gauge is a little bit shy of three. So as I stated, I'll pump a little more, just so my bottle says three. Um, currently six, and a half minutes have elapsed since I started pumping. Clearly more out of breath, but this is possible for the average human being. I and mean, that was with a short little, <clears throat> you know, maybe 30 second pause. So let's just pump. We'll do 10 more, should get us to 3,000 even. All right, once your bottle is full and you're satisfied, you cannot release this foster fitting until you bleed the pressure. Um, even if you did and were able to release this, it's under tremendous pressure and you were to manhandle it off there, the uh, check ball should close your tank so it won't be a rocketing projectile, but this hose is gonna come off like a cracked whip. So remember to bleed your tank off and do it quick. Don't just do it slow. So crank this thing. If you do it slow, what happens is you'll trap this check ball and it can just keep bleeding back out your tank. And there you have it. Tank pumped right to the button, guys. 3,000. And the most exercise I've had in a little while. Angry Cruiser, I hope that helps you. <laughs>